In the name of Jesus. Amen. For lazy Christians, convinced of their own faith while habitually avoiding church, shunning the neighbor and living only for personal pleasure. James's words are a warning shot when he says, faith without works is dead. The sluggish, procrastinating, sinful flesh of us all would rather these words not be true. We'd rather wave them off for sounding too pietistic for our taste, then we wouldn't be confronted with the possibility that maybe, just maybe, the faith we think we have is no faith at all. We should flee, run from any theology that teaches you must bring before God a heap of good works in order to receive his favor. But in our necessary flight from any deadly legalism, the devil is right there goading us into sloth so bad we tend to think we can even bypass going to church and hearing the word of God and everything will be just fine. When the reality is, it is not. Faith without works is dead. For the opponents of Luther, this verse was supposed to be a theological dagger, plunging deep into the heart of justification. The teaching that the sinner is justified in Christ alone, by faith alone, minus works of the law. Instead, this word of God, penned by James, only strengthened the Lutheran position and highlighted that faith saves, and oh, by the way, this faith we are talking about, the faith of the baptized believer, the faith God gives through his living word, is never alone. True living faith is the mother and source of works that are truly good and well-pleasing to God. It does not ask whether good works are to be done, but before the question is asked, it has already done them and is constantly doing them. Good trees make good fruit. Good works follow faith. Faith without works is dead. This is not a call to busyness. This is not a call to look at your works to determine the genuineness of your faith. Have I done enough? The answer is always no. The righteous, good law of God always demands more. The object of faith, that which faith looks to and receives, is never the flesh, it's always Jesus. Faith looks to Jesus and receives his gifts. And faith is not mere passive knowledge, as James points out, which even the demons have. Faith in Christ means you are forgiven, completely renewed be born and live to him. Faith in Christ means possession of the Holy Spirit who calls, gathers, enlightens, sanctifies, and keeps the sinner in the one true faith. Faith always looks to Jesus and his word of promise. When you take your eyes off him and you look to yourself, your gaze is on the wrong object. That phrase, faith without works is dead. It's not a call to trust in your works to merit what God gives. It's a call to repentance and faith in the one who raises the dead. It's a call to repent over our laziness, our sluggishness, our flight from the neighbor, and our lust for pleasure. I remember when I was a youngster, adults telling me stuff like, you think you have it hard now, just wait until you're in the real world. Well, here's a news flash for them and anyone who would say such a thing. You are in the real world. And your struggles and your trials, your sins and iniquities, your enemies are just as real as anyone else's. Amidst the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, hope of any sort mustn't reside in ourselves, and our spiritual gaze should not be on ourselves and our efforts, no matter how strong we think we are. Just a little phrase in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses, reveals that sin is always there. But renewal and forgiveness, these are daily things we need, and indeed, Christ Jesus freely gives them. And 
faith receives them. Faith is counted as righteousness, not because of its production, but because faith grabs Christ. He is your righteousness. In Him you are blessed, because in Christ your sins are not held over your head and against you, but His blood has paid for every single one of them. It is not the works of our flesh that in some way appease God's wrath. Jesus has done that. That's his work, to go to the cross, to drink the cup of God's wrath down to its dregs. And he has done it for you. The punishment has been met. The sin atoned for. And you are truly and freely forgiven by faith in Christ. Even the dark sins. Even the secret sins only you know of, Christ has them all, and he has paid for them all in full, completely. In him, your sin is not, and it will not be counted against you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.